Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth. Welcome back to Coding Shorts. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about Petite View, a small version of a library built by the same person who built the View library. The purpose of Petite View is specifically to add interactivity to web pages without having to have a large build step. It's a very small library that you can drop on any web page and get working at small pieces of interactivity. It doesn't replace Vue or want to build whole big spa applications with it, but it does fill a niche that I think jQuery and even the original Vue tried to fill in or even knock out. Let's take a look. Hey there, let's talk a little bit about Petite View. Petite View is a small drop-in component that you can use to get some view-like functionality without building an entire single-page application. Let's see how it works. I like it because it really reminds me of the early days of Vue where we just included it on a page, had one JavaScript file or even no JavaScript file in the case of Petite View and just went about our day. But I'm going to go beyond what the sort of demo does, and I'm going to try to create something a little bit more real. So we have an HTML page that just has a quick contact us form. This is what that looks like right now. There's nothing in here. It doesn't work. We say send message, and it actually tries to post that form. We want to really change this to make it act like it's working. Though we're not actually going to send it at the end of the day, but we'd like to be able to at least pretend we're sending it and add validation and some things like that. So let's see how this gets started. First, we have a, already have a main.js and it is completely empty. Let's go ahead and just say main.js here. And we're gonna need a script for HTTPS unpackage.com petite view. Now you could of course down this on your own, use NPM, whatever you wanna do. But for us, I'm really only using the package for build cycle for Tailwind. I'm not actually using it for any of my libraries. So I'm going to use unpackage here and I'm going to tell it to defer. Now, why am I deferring this? I want this to fire off after the entire DOM has been loaded. So I'm going to actually do that to both of these. So I don't have to worry about has the DOM been loaded. I can just go ahead and write code. And what we have in here is we have a form that we don't have a name for yet, but let's go ahead and give it a name. So let's say ID equals the form. And then we can start to actually create our project. So we can say petite view.create app. And if you've done view before, you're going to kind of know what this looks like anyway. And we're just going to say mount the form. So we're going to take over that part of the page in order to do our work. Now, if this looks familiar to create app and mount in view, that's on purpose. A lot of this has been borrowed from view and has been built by the same person. So you'll see some of this. Now, inside of this create app, we can go ahead and set up a simplified version of the object that represents the app. And so let's just start with something simple and just say name equals hello world, right? Simple that we've done before. And just down here, I'm just gonna say div name, right? Very similar to what we've done in view before. And if I've done this right, here in the example, we can see hello world is showing up. Okay, cool we can go ahead and do that sort of binding. And so let's get rid of this name because we're not really gonna use it. And notice that the data elements here are just directly in the object. The objects directly here are accessible and then they'll be accessible to any method you write as well. So instead of this, let's create one called message. And this will just have some names like full name, email, subject, and body right? And in order to do something on that, we might want a method here or function, if you prefer that name, to say send, right? So we're just going to create one and I'm just going to say alert sent, right? Really simple. We want to be able to make this change and then have something alert. So we're just creating that bindable surface, a little simplified from views option syntax. And so over here, we can do a couple of things. First, I'm going to come up here to the form and say at submit. Again, copying that view style of at meaning there's an event and then we're handling a submit. And I'm just going to say send, right? But I'm actually going to use prevent so that the form doesn't actually go ahead and submit itself. That dot prevent is something else. It's borrowing 
from view in order to allow that to happen. So before we do any of that binding, let's come over here and if we click, we can see send. So we're seeing that this is working already. We don't have any of this bound yet, but we'll get there in a minute. We can actually come down here below the form and I'm just gonna create a pre-section that just says message, just so we can see the message. I put it in a pre and this will be formatted as a JSON object. So now we can see we just have the message here. And that's not working. Oh, because it's outside the form. So one of the things we're doing here is because we're saying the form is here, everything needs to be inside of the form. This message is just doing what it's doing because it's not inside that event. So it might make more sense to leave it there and then just move the form up because this responsibility for where it's mounting really comes down to at what level of the component, what it's going to be monitoring and being prepared for. You could do this at the body level as well, but I tend to like to isolate this work as much as possible. If we go back now, we can see we got our object, doesn't have any data, but of course typing in it doesn't do anything either, right? Not filling in them. So what would we do in view is do view model. This is a two-way binding to message dot full name, right? We've got that. And I'll go ahead and do some copy paste for the other properties. And so we now look at it, we'll see that as we type, it's being put in there as the different things you want. And that works. So let's come back here and just in our send, in our main dot, let's put this over here. We have both of them. And in our send, we'll just say instead of alert, let's create a new property called status. And what are we going to do with status? We're just going to say this dot status. So this is how we would get at any properties or methods that are on this simple object. And we're going to say it equals sent to this dot message dot full name, right? So when we press send, we should get that. So let's put my name in there. And then when I say send message, it's not showing it because we haven't bound it anymore. Of course, come down here and just say status. So let's go say Sean again and press send message. And we, we can see that that message is being shown once we make that change. If we change it again, of course, it'll reassign it and it works. Of course, I said send instead of sent and it's going to make me crazy if I don't fix it. But we might want to do more in send, right? We might want to actually have and deal with some rules. And so let's say if validate then we can go ahead and say that we have this send. And we're gonna go ahead and just create validate on here. Now, this isn't necessarily what I would suggest you do, but it's just a way of showing you that you can do more than just the, the simple piece here. And so I'll start with a let of valid, and I'm gonna make it true by default and then return valid, right? And I'm gonna need some rules here. I'm just gonna write some really simple rules. Like it's sort of guessed one for me, but I'm, I also want to say if this dot message dot full name could exist, or more importantly, if it doesn't exist, then I want to show an error. Else we want to test for another issue, and then we can sort of leave it there, right? This is the sort of the simple formatting of the sort of test we want. But I'm actually going to choose something because I hate having all this cruft here. So I'm actually going to say const, and I'm going to destructure them email, subject body. So I'm just going to get them from this message. So then we, these can be just a little easier to read. A little trick I do. Notice I'm saying const because I don't want to actually change them or reassign them. I'm just testing them. And so here in my full name, what do I want to do? If it's not the full name, then I want to set a new object. And I'm going to create that object and I'm going to call it an error, right? Or errors. And I'm going to do the same name. Full name, email, subject, and body. And let me put a colon here. You gotta love Copilot for doing some of these demos. It's just great, helping me a lot. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty great. So if it's not, then I'm just gonna say this dot errors dot full name equals full name is required, valid equals false. Of course, I could use an engine to do this, but I'm gonna do it all manually for now. So set errors must be at least three characters. I'm gonna change this to five. Put that as five, and I'll continue down this road by essentially doing the same thing, 
for each of these. So this is going to be, if not email, I can go ahead and say email is required. And then for the else if here, instead of full name here, I'm going to paste in a quick check for the email must be a valid email address. And I'll need to do the same for if not subject, subject is required, valid false, subject is less than five. And then finally, body. It's going to help us with that as well. We'll move it up to the top. Body is required. I'm going to add another one. If body is, let's say, greater than 500, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say, right? Collapse this. Oh, I must have an extra little bit here. Oh, it really doesn't like these. Of course, they're not necessary. And one of us forgot a bracket. Go ahead and format to make sure it's all working. And now if we go back, let's go ahead and add a pre here for the error as well. Here we can see they look the same, but of course, as I start typing and press send, it's not working. And we could debug it, but let me see if I can find the error. I think the problem is right here. Yeah, there is no validate. So we can just say this dot validate because just like accessing the members with this we have to activate the members that are functions as well so let's go ahead and type our name and then when we say send message what is going to happen full name email evidently i have a little bug here but we can go ahead and fix that so full name oh email this is why you can't trust ai to write code right who's with me <laughs> uh Let's try it one more time. Send message, getting all the names. If I fix this, if I fix this, it's not going away, right? The reason is that when we're doing the validation here, so we also need an else, this dot errors dot full name equals blank. We'll need to do this on all of them to essentially just clear out the error message after we get it once. We have all the names there. Let's go ahead and put in a name name becomes empty or hopefully if it's too short may have to be that other object right and we're doing all this with just simple code these really useful for these sort of one-off small little projects let's complete this idea just so we can have a beginning to end and i'm going to add a little div here i'm going to say v if errors dot full name then errors dot full name and uh, let's just add a little color by saying text red. Let's make it uh, kind of a light red and let's also say italic. And I'm going to copy this after each one and let's add some spaces in here so we can see it a little better. Of course, it's not going to be full name. It's going to be email, email. And this even allows us to create components if we wanted to do, but that's, that's a talk for another day. Subject, subject, and then finally body body. And so if we now press it, we're going to get these errors. I wish I'd made this five. It's a little more readable. Sorry, this is more about how Tailwind works, but then message, they were getting all the little errors, where, however we want to sort of represent them, knowing that we have an error there. And we'd like to get them in one more way, and that is actually, let's go ahead and use that key up, validate. Right, I'm going to add the key up to each of the inputs so that every time we type, we're going to get these validations happening as well. So that way we can get the reaction. So we get this and we can see the whole validation because we're validating the entire object. But as I type, it'll go ahead and go away as I handle it. So Sean isn't blank anymore. Must be a valid address. And put AOL.com in there and it suddenly succeeds. So we're getting that experience we want. Last piece I'll go ahead and put in here just to try to be complete is I want to go ahead and disable this. And I'm using the colon syntax to bind to a attribute, again, just like Vue does. And I, here I'm just going to say if errors valid and put a not before it. Now we don't have a property for valid, right? So let's create one and let's say it's false by default. And then down here in our validate, I'm just going to say this dot error that valid is just going to be whatever the last time it was run here. And because it's going to be run a lot, we should be able to now see, can't send a message until all of the 
properties are done. Oh, I got to change that from full name, but that'll do. And then that becomes valid. The second I have an invalidation, it goes away. And being able to build things around this, I think, are kind of interesting. This is no build step. This is when I have a small little project. I think Petite View, which I only included by including it here, is sort of a one-off for simple pages. I'm hoping to find this useful when I do things like static websites, where I don't necessarily want a whole build step every time I make a change. And this would allow me to do this with just pretty simple nomenclature, right? using simple pages to do simple things, but still building more complex single page applications in Vue or in Angular or whatever framework you want. But I think this represents kind of a, a throwback to not having to get a whole build step in just because you want to make some page a little more functional. Thanks for joining me on this new coding short. My name is Sean Wildermuth as usual. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help us. I'll see you next time.